What's going on, guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here to examine Uncanny X Men issue 145. Uh, this issue, we have a new creative team. Uh, Dave Cockrum is back as the new penciler. Uh, he uh, helped launch uh, the all new, all different X Men with Giant Size issue 1. Uh, and then he left uh, sometime uh, in the early 100s of the series and then was replaced by John Byrne. And then John Byrne left, and now Dave Cockrum is back. And I don't know how long Dave Cockrum is going to be on the book. Uh, at least, uh, I want to say, another 10 issues or so. Uh, and I am not entirely sure on the circumstances of why Cockrum left. Uh, I remember uh, years ago, around the time when either the second or third X-Men movie came out, uh, there was this DVD released uh, that had interviews with various artists who had worked on the X-Men. And uh, this was uh, shortly before Dave Cockrum died, uh, and he talked about how he had this idea for a creator-owned series, and then uh, Louise Simonson uh, kind of convinced him that he should go and create this creator-owned series. And uh, I think that was why he left the X-Men, at least one of the times why he left the X-Men. Uh, I don't know if that was the first time uh, that he left the book, or if that was after this batch of issues that we're going into uh, when he left uh, to do that. Uh, but also, I remember reading somewhere uh, that Cockrum really didn't enjoy working with Claremont uh, around this time. Uh, and uh, I'd have to dig up uh, that post if I can find it, and I don't know if I'd be able to, but I remember reading somewhere uh, a clip from an interview or something where Cockrum had some not terribly nice things to say about Claremont, uh, and uh, I would have to reread that, uh, and I can probably talk more about that uh, in the coming issues as we uh, get closer to uh, Cockrum uh, whenever he leaves the book a second time. Uh, but anyway... Most of this issue is just set up uh, for uh, this storyline. Uh, so we start with Storm and uh, Kitty Pride's dancing instructor, uh, Stevie uh, Hunter. Uh, they are at the opera, and then they are attacked by uh, Miss Locke, who works for Arcade. Uh, she injects some kind of poison into both of them and says that uh, Arcade has made Doctor Doom angry. And so uh, Doctor Doom has kidnapped Arcade and intends to punish him. And then uh, Miss Locke has kidnapped uh, various civilians connected to the X-Men and basically says, if you guys don't rescue Arcade, I am going to murder all of these people. And it's Amanda Sefton, uh, Jean Grey's parents, uh, I believe uh, Candy Southern is mentioned, uh, and uh, Ilyana Rasputin. Uh, and Miss Locke says, you know, I've kidnapped all these people, so uh, you'll get them back if you rescue Arcade. Uh, and so then we spend several pages with Storm going around and confirming that these people have been kidnapped. So she goes to the Gray's household, and they're not there. And then she goes to Amanda Sefton's apartment, and she's not there. Uh, and then, uh, finally, uh, she goes to the mansion and tells Professor X what's going on, and then we get several more pages of Professor X uh, gathering a team, uh, because basically... Storm and Wolverine both say if they do exactly what Miss Locke says, if they go and rescue Arcade in exchange for the civilian hostages, then uh, they're never going to stop using uh, the loved ones of the X-Men uh, to hold the X-Men over the fire. So they need to uh, go and rescue the civilian hostages uh, to kind of send a message, hey, you don't mess around with our loved ones. And Storm uh, says, okay... I agree with Wolverine saying that, but also we need to uh, kind of uh, play this smart. And so uh, they basically get a second X-Men team put together at the last minute. You've got Iceman, uh, Banshee, uh, and I don't think that there is any mention of Banshee basically losing the use of his powers back uh, shortly before uh, the Dark Phoenix saga. I don't think there's any mention of that. I, I don't remember. Uh, but uh, Iceman, Banshee, uh, Polaris, and Havoc, uh, they are uh, brought together. Uh, to be a B team, uh, and they are going to go and uh, rescue the hostages from uh, Arcade uh, or, or from Miss Locke at Murder World, while Storm and uh, the main X Men, who we've been reading about this whole time, they are going to go to Latveria uh, to rescue Arcade. Uh, and I don't really know why, if they plan on rescuing Arcade, 
then why, or if they plan on rescuing these civilian hostages, why even bother going to rescue Arcade? Because if you get the civilian hostages out, then there's no point in going and getting Arcade. And spoilers, it turns out that this is a trap anyway, and that Doctor Doom is not upset with Arcade. Arcade is actually working with Doctor Doom uh, to trap the X-Men for some reason. Now, I understand why Arcade would want revenge on the X-Men, because they defeated him the last time that they crossed swords. I have no idea why Doctor Doom wants to work with Arcade, and why he has any beef with the X-Men. He's never met any of them, as far as I know, uh, so I don't know why Doctor Doom is working with Arcade uh, in this story. Uh, but uh, I also don't really understand why, uh, if you are sending someone to go and rescue the hostages, why not just send all of the X-Men to do that? Uh, have 12 X-Men go rescue the hostages, and then you can say, nah, 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 we're not going to go and rescue Arcade, you have nothing over us. Uh, so I don't really, like, the, the whole issue kind of hinges on a very flimsy premise, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, and then we do check in with uh, Cyclops briefly. Uh, somehow he and Lee Forrester have crashed somewhere in uh, the Bahamas. Uh, Cyclops has made a makeshift. Uh, basically, he's blindfolded himself because he does not have his uh, visor or his glasses to block his uh, optic blast. So he has uh, taken a shirt and blindfolded himself, and uh, they are stuck somewhere. Maybe they'll be rescued. Maybe they won't. That's what Lee says. Uh, and uh, Professor X, when he's uh, contacting all these uh, people, telling them, you need to come back. We need you for an emergency mission, uh, he says uh, that it's getting harder for him to use his telepathy to talk to people like on the other side of the planet because the Earth's magnetic field has been altered. And he says, uh, this has to be Magneto. Magneto is doing this, but why? Uh, and that is going to be uh, followed up uh, in a few issues, uh, not immediately, but uh, I had forgotten that that story is being set up this early uh, with uh, the next big Magneto adventure. But uh, Professor X is sensing it. He knows that it's coming up, uh, but he doesn't know, uh, I guess, where Magneto is because uh, the magnetic field, somehow it's uh, interfering with his telepathy. And uh, most of this issue is just setting up the idea that, okay, uh, we've got two X-Men teams, one of them is going over here, and one of them's going over here. Uh, the last, like, five issues, of, or five pages of the issue, uh, Storm, uh, she goes to wherever Doctor Doom is at now. Uh, he is currently no longer the dictator of Latveria. He was driven insane, and then he was driven out of the country, and then he regained his sanity, and now he's planning to take back Latveria, but he hasn't yet. Uh, and so... Storm goes and says, hey, you have Arcade. I want him back. And so they're eating dinner. They both kind of have a crush on each other. Uh, and then the X-Men, they sneak in the back door uh, to try and rescue Arcade. But like I said, Arcade is working with uh, Doctor Doom. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, and that's it. Uh, well, then Doctor Doom turns Storm into a statue. Uh, and that's it. Um, I have said before, I am not a fan of Arcade. I don't find him to be a very interesting character. I find him to be incredibly annoying. Uh, and like I said, this issue doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Why are Doctor Doom and Arcade working together? Uh, why uh, gather a team of X-Men to go and rescue the hostages? If they succeed, then you guys are just putting yourselves in needless danger. Why are you doing that? Um, I feel like this issue would also be cooler if they plan to permanently have a backup team of X-Men. If they were bringing back Banshee, Polaris, Havoc, and Iceman, and then they said, okay, these guys are going to be uh, going and doing this stuff, while our main team is going to be doing this stuff, and that was like a permanent feature of the series. I think that would be kind of neat. Uh, and we're not that far away from having multiple X-Teams existing simultaneously. Uh, just like a year down the line, uh, if that, uh, we are going to get the New Mutants as a series. Uh, and so I wonder if if this was Claremont kind of testing the waters of what if we had multiple X teams going uh, all at once. Uh, but uh, he was not behind the creation of X-Factor, but he was uh, there uh, from the beginning with New Mutants. So I wonder if this is him kind of toying with that idea of having a couple of different X-Teams uh, doing different stuff. Uh, I don't know. But uh, anyway, that is about it for this issue. Uh, so uh, in the meantime, let's consider this one examined. 